get more people on. He's get a, a full cast. He's like eight people to do, to do a four hour recording all yeah. in one one thing. Yes, uh, I will play uh, Brenda, so then I can just cut out early. <laughs> Leave you to it. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do Janice, the heavy work in the beginning. Oh, gee, <laughs> bloody hell. Uh, yeah, she has, like, the most dialogue in the film, and she's only in the first half. Uh, I mean, there's a, that's what I like about the scene, though. There, there's, there's a lot to absorb, the different character dynamics. And I, I also liked uh, – sorry, I'm jumping on someone else, but when Susan McAllister, when she's like, do you like your job? And then Carter Blake's, oh, no, you didn't. Then I like her response, though. No, you'll be out of a job if this doesn't go through. Her approach to this conversation is awful. <laughs> Because it's a, it's a very <laughs> valid conversation to be having. Like, we need this test to go well. This guy's going to shut us down. Come on, do you, do you like your job? Do you like working here? But she's like, do, do you like your job? And it's just, she's just real <laughs> aggressive. It, it sounds like she's threatening him. And this is not the tack she should be taking. Ah, everyone comes to get some Carter's past. I mean, <laughs> Russell turns up and gets some Carter's past. And he's been on, on deck for about all of five minutes. A, a man with your history? Yeah. <laughs> But again, that's another weird transition because he goes from like saying, you know, a tourist thing to then talking about his history. And we see, again, we see this in the conversation between Susan and Carter who go from, oh, let's go and uh, go out for a beer to, oh, I'm going to fire your ass if you don't fall in line. <laughs> it's the weird transition that, that uh, seems to befall him. <laughs> uh, much like the fact that Preacher can't fall over properly. Bill Carter constantly has to like make up for it by like distracting us with his amazing falling so that when the one time preacher has to fall over <laughs> which is just interesting every time I every time I see that sequence. Wait, he falls over in the kitchen when he's on the Yeah, he sort of staggers back and he's sort of like whoa 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 <laughs> <laughs> And it's all like it's all like they said to like uh, oh it's all like you know we can get someone who's like no no I, I'm gonna do my own stunts in this movie and then he looks so like really half ass I don't <laughs> need a crash mat. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. What would Carter Blake's fall down have looked like? <laughs> we see it so many times. He would have thrown himself like full pelt. He would have been like jackass. He would have like, busted a hip like, or something. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's fun. It's like, just like full on like, like backdrop. Like he just like launch himself off his feet into that plate rack rather than the stagger back into it. <laughs> I, I need this scene. And I just want a scene of, it's just a, a wide shot of a flat, wet surface and Carter just slides by. <laughs> 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 like an angels in the outfield when they drag that guy to steal the base about 30 feet that's just carter blake sliding through <laughs> would carter blake be good at baseball i'd be good at sliding into home but yeah other than that i think well he's a physical guy i'm sure he'd get, he's probably got baseball in his past yeah, yeah. He, he can he can wrangle a baseball <laughs> That's how you play, isn't it? You wrangle a baseball. I, I, that's pretty funny what you said. Yeah, 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 sure. Like, things go quickly wrong for him. He's riding a shark at the end, and he's going to survive, but then he gets shot in the leg. <laughs> I love watching his, like Thomas Jane's face where after Susan says to him, like, do you like your job? You, you can just really see the cogs moving from him, like, <laughs> processing and what she's saying. It's, it's, it's great acting. Because uh, he's kind of playing, he was a bit of a dumber character, uh, just like uh, watching the the emotions form on his face. But I really like the acting job. Dude, it's TJ. He's studying. He, like Stellan was off screen coaching him. Absolutely. He's, like, <laughs> he, he's not looking at uh, at Saffron Burrows. He's looking at Stellan Skarsgård and mirroring exactly what the expressions he's doing. <laughs> 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 Let's not forget Stellan Skarsgård's the reason that we have uh, Enya's Orinoco flow in um, the end of the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Whoa. Because uh, they were basically they came to the scene and him and Daniel Craig they were like oh we need some music for the scene and they were just going through Stern Skarsgård's um, iPod and they came across Enya and it's sort of like oh wouldn't this be funny and then Finch was like yeah we will use that but Janice has a what tattoo does she have she has Rolling Stones Brenda oh yeah no oh, Brenda oh, sorry. Rolling Stones Brenda. yeah <laughs> she has the Rolling Stones uh, lick do you guys want to know something weird. She is in the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington, where they sing a lot of Rolling Stone songs. Oh, she's in Romance and Cigarettes as well, which was directed by her brother, John Turturro, and is it's a musical. Oh, is it? It's, it's one of my favorites. I love Romance and Cigarettes. That's a musical, know. correct? Yeah, it, it's it's phenomenal in that you've got Christopher Walken singing uh, Delilah. It's one of the best scenes you'll ever see. <laughs> well, I still have about eight more deleted scenes to talk about. I so. think we should save those for next week. 
All right, so yeah. Well, well this scene this scene ends with a really well, weird. the raising of the fences, and then yeah. Carter Blake is looking at them all, like I don't know if he did. Yeah, it's like yeah, I sorted it out. Scoggins sorted out raising the fences. I'm not sure how how much work is involved in raising the fences. I feel like they should already be at the maximum height. Did Scoggins go around with some extra chicken wire and <laughs> physically staple it together, like weld it to make it taller? If he has, then he's done a, a pretty quick job. It's, it's a big old job. It's yeah. not something that one person's going to be able to do. Yeah, there's only eight people yeah. there anymore, and he's the only engineer. Everyone else has been busy. And he's not very good. He's not very good. He's a terrible engineer. I think he's done nothing. Uh, imagine this scene Lying. during the during the party. He's in the background just, like, like adding fence. But he's <laughs> not. He's in the background hating on cake. Trying yeah. to dance and failing. <laughs> he should be working. <laughs> he probably didn't fix it. He just said, "Yeah, I totally fixed it." Because he's like, "The shark's not gonna jump over that." He knows that Carter can't measure things with his eyes. <laughs> it's eight, eight feet, give or take a centimeter. <laughs> <laughs> I would never let him go. That he mixes metric and imperial in one sentence. Oh, but this this is you and your engineer things. Like your favorite shot of the Star Wars, so was, um, Rogue One was just when you saw how the Death Star got built, wasn't hey, it? I just want a a time lapse video of someone building a Death Star in space from whatever, however that starts. Just yeah. the, the whole thing. Just give me that in like ten minutes. I will sit there and watch it, and I'll watch it on repeat, and that'll be my weekend. Just I watched one of someone doing the Legos Death That's Star. That's not the same. That. I'm just jealous of not having one. And then they dropped it at the end. <laughs> I've seen people get in the, the UCS giant Millennium Falcon building it and throwing it off the roof to see if it would fly. <laughs> just made me, <laughs> made me just die a little inside when I saw that. Well, every time I go, I always say, it's like my wife, when we go to Legoland with the kids, it's like, I just want my, like, Lego Feminucleus submarine so I can have my Lego Sean Connery and being at my favourite scenes from Red October. <laughs> Still to find a little, it. But... A little Lego Sam Neill dying. I wish I'd seen <laughs> Montana. Okay, I feel like we've drifted far off of this chapter. Maybe we should call this a day. So, Kim, Elwood, where can, where can our listeners find more of you online? Yes, you can check us out our podcast, which is Movies and Tea. Each season we look at a, a different director and we go through their filmography and identify the you know themes and traits of their work. Uh, so far we have just wrapped a production on our fifth season. Uh, which is David Fincher, and previously we've done Paul W. S. Anderson, we've done Guillermo del Toro, uh, Sofia Coppola, and Ang Lee. Ang Lee. <laughs> and uh, we're now sort of gearing up for our sixth season, which is going to be a change of pace as we're going to be celebrating female directors. But you know, we're celebrating like you know, female directors whose work don't make you want to kill yourself, as I put it. Karen Kusama, she's she's badass. Are you are you covering the voices? Uh, what, I can't remember who, who directed the voices. I think, I think we have got Kusama on our list. We do yeah, have she, Kusama. She yeah. did Invitation Destroyer, Jennifer's Body, Girl Fight. Like she has some badass movies. Oh yeah, Girl Fights on our list. Yeah. Mar- Marjane Satrapi, the voices. Cover that. Oh, Portrait oh, okay. of a Lady on Fire. I love the voices. I know you did, Jay. I did, I tried watching it, but it was so sort of like it just I wasn't in the right mindset for Fragile Ryan. Ryan well, get in these, the right mindset. Voices being too angry. Well, it was sort of like when I tried to watch Do the Right Thing, and it was like a billion degrees outside, and all it is is just people shouting at each other for like two hours. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle. Like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> it's too hard for this. So you just I watch the to thing and stuff. To... Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's a scary man. movie. I still haven't wrapped my copy. I know what that film's like, so I've. Still to unwrap my copy. It just sits there torn to me. Well, uh, Elwood, you, you've recently, you've taken inspiration from our little podcast here and set off on your I own have. spin-off. Yes. Thank you, guys. You inspired me to do my own chapter-by-chapter chapter work, and I'm teaming up with my co-host on the Asian Cinema Film Club, uh, Stephen, and we are doing a deep dive into Battle Royale, the cult classic that it is, and we're not only looking at the film, but also drawing comparisons to both the book and the manga, um, and noting the differences there as well. So we've got the first episode out now. Uh, you can find that both on its own independent feed, and you can also find it on the Asian Cinema Film Club feed as well, to so whatever works best for you. And um, yes, it's uh, it's it's been fun so far, but I like you guys, it's sort of like you get into a chapter and it's so hard to not like try to skip ahead because you know what lies ahead and you're trying to focus just on the one chapter and i also keep getting weird suggestions of what we should be doing next and it's sort of like it's like oh we really want you guys to like do inland empire and it's all like i don't want to do inland empire no, hell like, no. any 
my Jesus. psyche couldn't cope with like doing that by the minute or Talk by the chapter. rabbit sitcoms for an hour. No, thank you. That's dark. Yeah. It's really dark. So I don't know if this is going to be, you know, a new bonus thread, but uh, certainly Butter Oil is a film we rated as uh, like our number one film when we did our top 100. And it um, is important. I mean, it ushered in that revival of interest in Asian cinema, along with like The Ring and Audition. So it's, you know, way outlived what should have been just really sort of a throwaway title. And it's one of those films which people who don't like subtitle movies have seen. So, so yeah, it's, it's great to finally get to really geek out over it. Excellent. And, and Kim, what film are you going to start covering chapter by chapter? <laughs> I, I don't have this. Uh, I, I feel like I already have enough projects. So <laughs> I'm okay. Although, although I have been thinking about doing a podcast on my own. So <laughs> I just haven't been able to figure out a name for it, so that's going to happen eventually one day. Deleted scenes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's the thing. It's hard to find a good title for shows. Well, it just needs to be simple. You don't want to be cute. Like, you want people typing in, oh, Deep Blue see the podcast. Cool. Nice. Okay, well, uh, Mark, where can people find you? Go to Movies, Films, and Flicks. Uh, I have my podcast there, and I also have Movies, Films, and Flicks.com, Movies, Films, and FLIX.com. I write reviews. I put up weird data articles. I also write for Rotten Tomatoes. So go check that out. I started working with the film theorists on YouTube. So go there. I should have a few videos up there. I wrote about the Dark Knight's cash pile, the most Fast and Furious movie. And then I did one about It Follows. So go watch those. They're cool, man. Like they, I started writing for them. I do the verse videos. I write and research and uh, like work with this guy, Mark Ellis, to do the verses videos on Rotten Tomatoes. So we did a Fincher versus Nolan episode. It was really cool. So go to Rotten Tomatoes their YouTube page. Check that out. And then let's see, watch Portrait of a Lady on Fire. That movie's very good. I don't, I'm just throwing that in. And then I had a couple more. Oh, I want to say, hey, well, I don't know if you guys listen to this, but hi to all the our fans in Taiwan and Hong Kong, because we just hit number 18 there, the Movies, Films, and Flicks podcast. So hello to anybody who crosses over and listens to this. So thanks for listening. Yes. And you can find me over at uh, lifeversusfilm.com is my site. Uh, and also The Lamb, the largest association of movie blogs, largeassmovieblogs.com, which is a big collection of online movie blogs uh, from all across the world. Come and join us. We have The Lambcast, our weekly podcast covering all aspects of film. Uh, so yeah, come listen, come join the, the, the club. And you can follow the, this podcast, Deep Blue Sea the Podcast, at, at Deep Blue Sea Pod on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and email us deepbluesepod at gmail.com. And find us everywhere podcasts can be found where you should also go and subscribe and rate us five stars just because you should because we're the best it's great and you should do some grouper curls yes do some grouper curls pick up some groupers and curl them so yeah we'll we'll be back next week to talk about the next chapter but as, as for today i've been jake lewitt i'm mark hoffmeyer and thank you to kim lowe and elwood jones thank you thank you see you